So finally, I got my hand on a Raspberry Pi 5 and if you're an Apple HomeKit enthusiast like me, you're going to love this because we are going to build a powerful smart home hub and take your HomeKit experience to the next level with the seven wonders of building a DIY smart home. Hello and welcome to my channel which is all about building an affordable DIY smart home that supports the Apple HomeKit ecosystem and I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can literally use right now. So pretty please do take a look and don't be shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Now the last time I did a build a smart home hub for Apple HomeKit was way back in July 2022 and since the release of that video two major things happened. One, Raspberry Pi had released a new single board computer called the Pi 5, which is a tiny computer that you can still hold in your hand, super powerful and packs a punch. The second major thing is that the Pi OS moved away from 32-bit supporting system to 64-bit operating system, which meant applications also needed to support it, and due to which there were some failures with some app installs. So it was high time to update that video as well as do a couple of things differently. The first change is building the entire smart home hub on Raspberry Pi OS Lite rather than pre-flashing it with Homebridge. This helps in having a stable setup. The second change is install all of the apps using Docker containers, which allows you to add or remove any apps when needed. The third change is that system would always support 64-bit apps. Last but not the least, the fourth most important change is that towards the end of the video, I also have a surprise app installed, which will give you the seven wonders of building a DIY smart home. Now, what do you get with this smart home build? A locally controlled small form factor hub with hardware specs that will last for at least five years or more, allows to add devices that Apple doesn't officially support, multi-network protocol that allows to add devices from a large portfolio, dedicated HomeKit secure video platform, easy management and auto update of applications, plus comes with a easy shortcuts app to access all of them. And most importantly, remember the surprise app install? I will show you how the same hardware can unlock a lot more possibilities for your smart home and also keeps you within budget. So to piece this hub together, we will be using a Raspberry Pi 5 with 8 GB RAM with the official case as well as the official power brick. You can still use a Pi 4 with 4 GB RAM as well. Class 10 64 GB micro SD card, which is a minimum. Then to enable Zigbee protocol, we will be using a Sonoff Zigbee dongle. You can also use a Conby 2 stick a USB cable extension to avoid any radio interference with the Zigbee dongle. Now I've broken down the video into eight parts with their timestamps in the description and somewhere towards the end there's the seven wonder app that we will install to push your DIY smart home to the next level. This is definitely going to be an interesting build so let's begin the tutorial. So the first thing we need to do is flash the micro SD card with Raspberry Pi OS Lite. Now to do that, you will need to go ahead and download the Pi OS Imager. And also I've left a link in the description that has a video for the top eight apps you will need whilst you're building your DIY smart home. So you wanna check out that as well. So go ahead and download uh, this uh, software. I've also left a link in the description. And while that is going on, you need to get a micro SD card adapter insert in the micro SD card and then you want to insert into your computer or into your SD card reader and then we can go ahead and flash the software. So once it's downloaded, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the application and then you want to choose device, select Raspberry Pi 5 and then you want to choose OS. You want to click on Raspberry Pi OS Other and then you want to go and click on Raspberry Pi OS Lite 64-bit. Not the full version, just the Lite version. And then from there, you want to select your storage. And then you want to click on Next. Now, here's the important part. You need to click on Edit Settings. And then you want to give it a host name. So we're going to call this Smart Home Hub. And then you want to set the username and password. I'm going to use Pi the default and Raspberry as the password. And then you want to set locale settings depending on where you live. And then under services, you want to check and enable SSH. So this will allow us to run that magical script. Under options, nothing to do. Click on general, check the settings and click on save. And then you want to click on yes. Click on yes to erase all of the contents. Put in your password 
and then it will write on the micro SD card. Give it a couple of minutes till the process is done. Once it's written, it's also going to verify all of the data on that SD card. And once that's completed, all you have to do now is eject the micro SD card, and then you're going to take a Raspberry Pi 5, insert in the, ras the SD card, and then from there, you want to connect the USB dongle, the Zigbee adapter, together with the Zigbee adapter. And then from there, you want to connect the network cable, and then from there, you want to power up the device. Once it's completed, you will see the network lights are flashing up now let's go ahead and access the raspberry pi so to access the raspberry pi and to run the magical script let's go ahead and open up terminal now if you're using windows pc you can also go ahead and download putty so let's go ahead and ssh onto the device now just in case before ssh you don't know what's the ip address assigned i've got a very uh, easy app if you're using a map called LandScan. so let's go ahead and open that and if you're using windows you can go ahead and download the advanced ip scanner and this is again in that same video the eight awesome maps you'll need if you're building a diy smart room so all i'm going to do is cl click on start and then you will see that it's already on my network so it uh, 192.168.1.90 now once you identify the ip address what you're going to do is you're going to access your router page in my case i'll be i'm using a unify network under devices under wired it's right here 190 i'm going and giving it a fixed ip address so every time this device restarts it's always going to use the same ip address which in turn allows you to always access all of the apps without any changes so once that is done, we are going to go now into terminal and we're going to type SSH pi and the IP address. Hit enter. Now, if you see this uh, error, don't worry. All you have to type is open, copy the link above. And you're going to see this when you're using the same Raspberry Pi and you flash it with another SD card. So hit enter. All you have to do is delete all of the entries with that IP address 1.90. Close and you're going to ssh again now you can type yes and put in the password that we had created while before flashing the sd card so in this case is raspberry and now we are in the uh, raspberry pi 5. now from here we're going to execute that magical script so first the contents uh it, it's it's the same but i've just updated a little bit we're going to do a complete system update then from there, I'm also going and installing Node.js just in case you installed something out of Docker container so you have the latest Node.js. We're go going to go ahead and install Docker. From there, we're going to install Portainer, Watchtower, MQTT. Then we will go into Zigbee to MQTT. From there, scripted Heimdall. So this is the 64-bit. It's definitely going to work. Then we will go ahead and install Homebridge. And towards the end, I've also given the order we're going to be configuring all of this. So let's go ahead and copy that link to pull the script and run the installer. Now, don't worry. I have left this in the description as well. So it takes around about 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your internet connection. So just pay attention. I'll be scrolling down whenever there's a change in the next app install. So I'm going to go on right now and hit enter. So the system upgrade has been completed. It's going ahead and installing Node.js. So as is recording this video, it's going to go ahead and install version 20.20.12.2. Uh, Node is installed. We're going right now to install Docker. So there's another script. It runs automatically. Next up is the Portainer setup. So this completely confirms that Docker has been uh, set up successfully. Portainer has been installed. Now we'll go ahead and install Watchtower to automatically install, update the apps. And then we go into MQTT. Once it's completed, Zigbee to MQTT. Uh, right now it also copies the basic configuration.yml uh, to the Raspberry Pi 5. We'll go and update that once we get into that configuration. You will see an error with Zigbee to MQTT. This is because the configuration.yml file wasn't configured. So it's going to provide an error. That's no problem. We're going to configure that uh, later in the video. And then now it's going ahead and downloading scripted. Now this is going to be the longest part. If I'm not mistaken, the file size is around about 2.1 GB. So you got to be patient at this end. And now next is going to go ahead and install Heimdall. This is the shortcuts app, uh, web app that you can access all of your applications. And this supports 64-bit 
Now, last but not the least, uh, we're going to go, go ahead and install Homebridge. Now, the only thing with Homebridge is once the Docker container has been installed, it automatically goes ahead and starts its service. I will show you how to stop it and then it will uh, go into the reboot mode. And once the Docker image is installed, it will go ahead and uh, automatically start the services. So let it start the services. Don't do anything until it will tell you, show you the QR code. So right now, Homebridge has already started, but we can't do much. We need to restart the Raspberry Pi. So all you're going to do is hold Control, tap on C. It's going to stop all of the services and then it will reboot the server. So with that being said, it's now rebooting the server. And also, as I mentioned, you'll see all of the applications in what sequence we will be configuring them. So additionally, I've also gone ahead and also created a little notepad. So we're going to be using this as well. So give it a couple of seconds and then we will start configuring the seven wonders of a DIY smart home. So let's go ahead and configure the first application. So this is Portainer. So we're going to use admin and then I'm just going to choose my own password because sometimes it has a problem of remembering it and create user. And then you want to go and click on get started. And right now you will see all of the containers that have been installed together with Portainer. I'm just going to talk about quickly about Watchtower. Uh, it automatically updates the applications in certain time intervals. This cannot be configured, but you'll know if a new image has been downloaded so right now we got seven containers, seven images. Once a new image is downloaded, you will see a yellow button over here called unuse. So that's been, that can be deleted and the image has been updated. You cannot update the service. So this is the first wonder we've got Portainer up and running. Now the next wonder is we're going to go ahead and test if the MQTT service is working. So right here it says MQTT service is working. So I'm just going to open up an app called MQTT Explorer and I'm going to put in the IP address. Since there's no username and password, I'm going to leave it as it is and I'm going to click on connect. So we see that the MQTT service is working. Now from here, let's go ahead and configure Zigbee to MQTT. Now with Zigbee to MQTT, you can see that the service has stopped because we need to go and complete some configuration. So the first thing we want to do is change directory to CD data. That's where we had downloaded the configuration YML. And then we're going to go ahead and access the Zigbee to MQTT web page. So we're just going to go on the guide, getting started. We're going to go to Linux and we're going to just go ahead and copy this first command. And we're going to paste it under the root directory. And this is where my Sonoff Zigbee. So if you're using a Conv2 stake or any other Zigbee coordinator, we will need this value. So mine ends with USB zero. So let's go back ahead and change directory to CD data. So we're going to type this sudo nano configuration dot YAML. And then right here, we're going to go and update the server. And then we know that the port is USB zero. If yours is a decons, it will be ACM. So I'm just going to go ahead and delete the adapter information. And then front end, we're going to keep it at 8081. And then the IP address 90. I left it at 8081 because that's commonly used. If you already have that port enabled for some other web service, you can change it right here to whatever you need. And then lastly, I'm going to generate the keys. Once this is completed, I'm going to type your control X, Y to save, enter. Now with that being said, there's one more service we need update. So we're going to copy this information TTY USB zero, go back to Portainer, click on Zigbee to MQTT, click on duplicate edit, and we're going to scroll all the way down and go under runtime and resources. And over here, you want to go ahead and update this information. If you don't do it, you're going to see a error called 503 if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to paste it here. And then we're going to go ahead now and click on deploy the container and click on replace. Give it a couple of seconds for the service to start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to click here on the logs. So we know that Zigbee to MQTT has started at this port. So I'm just going to go to this web link and here you are. So we have the Zigbee to MQTT service already up and running. The only thing you want to do is make sure permit join is enabled and availability is also selected. Now I've gone ahead and created a lot of Zigbee to MQTT videos. You can go now and start pairing your devices. Once you've completed pairing, make sure you disable the permit joints. Go ahead and configure the fourth one of the world is scripted. The service is already running. Click on show details. 
and click on visit website now you have to remember for scripted you want to make sure the web link starts with https if you don't have the letter s it's not going to you're going to get an error and the port is 10443 so we're going to give it a simple username and password another thing i recommend you don't need to give complicated username and passwords i typically use admin admin because it runs locally on my network you just want to make sure your wi-fi password and network passwords are alphanumeric log in you want to click on management console and then quickly you want to go ahead and install a couple of plugins so the first one would be homekit and the next one would be OpenCV. Again, if you have Unify, you can go ahead and uh, add in that plugin. I've gone ahead and done uh, videos as well. From here, you can access them. I've also left the link in the description and go ahead and configure any one of them. Let's go ahead and in configure Homebridge. So if you have a backup, you can restore from backup. If not, you can go ahead and click on get started. Again, simple username and passwords. Open dashboard. So with the Homebridge service up and running, let's go ahead and update the plugin. And then once this is completed, we will go ahead and update node. Restart Homebridge. All right, with Homebridge service restarted, we're gonna go ahead now and update node. To do that, click on the three dots, go to terminal. Within the Dockerized container, you can update node within the container. So super easy. All you have to do is copy this and we're gonna hit paste and hit enter. Now for the changes to take effect, we're gonna go back to Portainer, Containers, and we're gonna highlight Homebridge, and we're just gonna click on Restart. Now with the container successfully restarted, let's go back to Homebridge, go back to Status. You'll see that the Node.js version has been updated. Now the next thing we wanna do is we wanna bring in all of the Zigbee to MQTT devices. So let's look for Z2M, Enter. Let's install this verified version, hit Install. And to configure super easy, Click on plugin install, CP2 MQTT, local host because it's running on the same device, the MQTT service. And then I just typically go and cancel out all of this. And then you wanna click on save, no other configuration, restart home bridge. Let's go to status. So now you'll see that the Zigbee 2 MQTT has been connected to the local host. You'll get a connection success. Now, whatever devices you've added into Zigbee 2 MQTT, they will show up under accessories. So right now, all you have to do is scan this QR code and it will show up into Apple HomeKit. And I've got a fantastic playlist to add in other uh, devices, other brands, so you can see them and add them accordingly. Now from here, let's go ahead and configure the sixth one of the world, which is Heimdall. This is a basically a web shortcut application so all of the applications have been installed one of the difficult point is remembering all of the ip addresses and accessing them this one is quite simple you can even add in web addresses so let's go ahead and add in our first application so in this case i'm going to click on application type and i'm going to look for homebridge and then i want to get the url so i'm just going to go here Control c paste and then I can also go ahead and enable the auto login for a feature. So I'll add in the URL and add in the username and password. Test, you should see a successfully communicated, close, save. So now Heimdall will pull in the temperature and the RAM. So if we click on it, you can add this one. I'm just gonna go ahead and add in a couple more. Go ahead and add in Portena. And then again, this is another way I can enable the auto login. So right now you can also see the information for the containers. Now, last but not the least, we're going to add in Scripted. Now, Scripted is a little bit different. It's a web app uh, because it's not been officially added. So, just going to copy the link, add in the link, save it. So, right now, you've got the four apps installed. So, you can go ahead and add in more applications, more websites into Heimdall. The only website you're going to bookmark is Heimdall and automatically it loads in the applications together if any services are running onto them. And finally, the seventh wonder of building a DIY smart home. And you've seen me talk about it. I've done a video all about mentioning it in my smart home journey and it's home assistant. Now, just in case you start with home bridge, you've played with along with it, you're really comfortable and you started to flirt with the idea of looking into home assistant. So in this video, I will show you on how to add in that seventh wonder so that if you're 
thinking about it, it's there on the same system. You can play around. And once you're comfortable, you're ready to move on, you can wipe out this Raspberry Pi 5, install Home Assistant, and you can use a downloaded backup and restore from it. So it's an easy way of doing things. It won't be applied for Zigbee, to M Zigbee devices. You'll need to repair everything. But this will give you the opportunity to start flirting with Home Assistant. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and access terminal. And I'm just going to give you the commands instead of building from Portainer. Uh, if you are very well versed with Portainer, help the community, put it down in the comment section and people can copy from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type CD, go out to the parent directory, and I'm just going to copy the command. Don't worry, I'm going to left, leave it in the description. I'm going to paste it. So here, if you have a another Zigbee coordinator, you can add it over here. And that's by running the previous command that we have have above here and you just update that device location but since we're not doing that we're just going to have a clean install of home assistant without any additional devices because primary you've got zigbee to mqtt working with homebridge and just in case you can move everything officially into home assistant remember you're flirting with the idea and here's an opportunity if not you already got a smart home hub running but i still feel you will flirt with Home Assistant. So with this command, delete the uh, device location and all you have to do right now is hit enter. And just like that, Home Assistant is already installed. So let's go ahead and check Portainer. You click on this, eight containers, MVC, Home Assistant already installed. So let's get ready to flirt with it. I'm gonna click. There you have it, we've got a Home Assistant already installed. Let's go ahead and create my smart home. Give it a name again. If I were you, I would come to this install a later once you are a little bit more comfortable. If you have the plan to flirt around with it, just leave, let it be. And then it's up to you whether you want to provide any more information. Don't do anything. So we click on finish. If you go to notification, it automatically detects all of the devices over your network. We go to settings. One of the things we want to do is you want to go and uh, enable the advanced mode. Right now I'm working to create a playlist of home assistant on how I started my journey, but we're going to leave that to another day. However, you've got the seven wonder up and running for you. And there you have it. Our Raspberry Pi 5 is now a powerful smart home hub compatible with Apple HomeKit and has the seven wonders of building a DIY smart home. You can control all of your devices seamlessly from your iPhone or iPad. And trust me, the possibilities are endless. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more awesome DIY tutorials. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.